Sky Sports Sporting Director, presiding over another very successful championship. There was a plan, of course, to introduce a new Clio uh, championship this year. I think it's happening in France. The UK delayed by a year, but Formula Renault Euro Cup equally strong as it's been for the last few years with lots of talented drivers. And Lorenzo Colombo there, back for a second season in these cars, but only 13th in the championship, so finding himself a bit on the back foot here. You kind of expect the sophomore drivers to be right up at the front, but it's not happened yet. Now, there's something that's gone on on the installation laps for time and van der Hel because an incident will be investigated after the race. So we haven't seen what has happened, but Tymon van der Helm has done something to draw attention to himself even before we've got the race underway. So it's going to be, as I say, a 30-minute race. And uh, there, number 93, Gregoire Sursi, ready to go. There, David Vidal is dominant driver at Imola, and uh, here he will start on the outside of the third row, fifth, because pole position on a one by one staggered grid is on the outside, whereas for the rolling start, it's on the inside. 38, William Alatello alongside him, his teammate, the JD Motorsport drivers. Uh, David Vidal is third in the championship, Alatello is fourth, equal with Alex Quinn and uh, Victor Martins on points. So the finish driver, good to go. Number 38, as you see, William Alatalo. The medical car at the back ready to chase them on the opening lap. So the marshal with the green flag says, everybody's here, we're ready to go. Lights go to red. When the four red lights are extinguished, we'll get the first race of the weekend underway now with a really good start made by Victor Martins. But Kyle Connick with loads of wheel spin gets bogged down. Carl surged past him on the inside line as he sorted out that big fish tailing moment. But it's going to be Martins who leads with on the outside line. Colombo as they get down to turn one. It's the first pinch point on the lap, but so far so good. Everybody through with Victor Martins taking the lead. Lorenzo Colombo up into second place. David Vidal is on his toes, but it looks as though he's dropped back a place against William Alatalo, who's in fourth. But Collett was the big, big loser out of all of that as they come then up through turn four for the first time. So, race leader trying to get away and build that gap is Victor Martins. In second place, this is Lorenzo Colombo. And further back, you see Hadrian David in the other yellow and black Renault Sport liveried car trying to surge his way through on the inside as well. One gets squeezed way out wide, that being number 91. So, Paul Aaron. Runs out of road, gets it back onto the circuit, but Martin's getting away. And this is bad news, of course, for Kyle Collett, having squandered his front row starting, his uh, second row starting position. He's fallen back in the pack. And he's in danger of losing more places if he's not careful, because they're all now queued up behind him. Martin's leads the way then as they climb the hill for the first time. Martin's Colombo, Vidal is up to third, Alatello fourth, Sosi is fifth, Collett is sixth, seventh is Colapinto, eighth Patacek, ninth Van der Helm, and tenth is Amory Codil. Now, what can Collett do about the traffic ahead of him? Gregoire Sosi is the first man he needs to come up to have a go against as the field now turns downhill once again. Into the chicane comes Victor Martins, keeping Lorenzo Colombo at bay for the moment, trying to build that gap. They all Constantine are under braking for the chicane. Heading that up towards the end of lap number one. But here, look, with a clear real estate ahead of him, Victor Martins is gapping Colombo. Now, is he in turn under attack? Not yet, is he? Vidal is not close enough, really, to think about offering a proper challenge as they come up over the timing line. Now, through goes Martins at the end of lap one. He's eight tenths of a second to the good. Vidal has gained two places from where he qualified. And look at Collet, down three at the end of that lap. So Vidal is third, Alitalo fourth, Susi is fifth, and it's Collet, Colapinto, Patacek, Van der Helm, and Cordiel. We saw Paul Aaron running out of road, and that's cost him because he's down to 11th place now. Eight tenths of a second is the margin between the top two. And there is Kyle Collet trying to make back some of that lost ground here as he threads his way out of the Mercedes Arena, out of turn four, and powers now down towards turns five and six. Past the cut through hairpin on the right hand side. Collett goes down into turn six, then chasing after Gregoire Sosi. But right now he's a little bit stuck, can't really find a way of doing very much about the man ahead of him. As Victor Martins is building that lead, is he not? He's getting away from the opposition here as they come downhill once more. The 
through that right-hander at turn eight. Battle on not to be last there. Vicky Piria battling with Lashlo Tov. Replay of the start. Have a look at Collett. He gets all that wheel spin and the bat snaps left and right, but he corrects it. But by the time he sorted all that out, he's down into sixth place. Lucky not to get a further place lost, in fact, as they went down through turn one because he got run out wide. But Collett now putting himself on the back foot as he tries to make amends over the remainder of this lap. Up front, though, Victor Martin's being able to extend slightly the margin over the first couple of corners, and he's getting on with the job even more so now, pulling further away. So there you've got the cars up out of the chicane, end of lap two, heading to the timing line, 30 minutes plus that regulation lap, and the cars come over the line with Martins then, eight tenths ahead he was, two laps are in the book, and the margin is now 1.2 seconds, he's getting away, and in fact even Kyle Collett down in sixth place, he's not really staying on the back here of Gregoire Sossi, that margin not coming down between the pair of them, who is, if anybody, going to be the mover out of this for the moment, 71, struggling also to make progress, Amory Cordille, So Martins trying to edge away. He's on the fastest lap of the race. And he comes out of turn four, whereas through the arena goes Cordiel on the back of time and van der Helm. From the field down to turn five with number 73. Time and van der Helm in ninth place, keeping Cordiel at bay, but they are behind Petr Potacek who should now be able to extend that margin if they're busy squabbling behind him. Downhill once more, clock ticks on down, but Martins doing good, absolute bests in sectors. Everybody getting quicker, of course, as tyres get warmer, as fuel loads get lighter, but Martins doing absolute best as he builds that lead over Lorenzo Colombo in second place. see going through that Schumacher S on the previous shot just how much the curve is used as the racing line but equally here you can see how Martins sector by sector is getting away from the opposition he's building that gap nicely all the while here up to the chicane they come break flick left flick right back onto the power and then down towards turn 17 the end of the lap is through there rattling up the curve goes number 91 Paul Aaron so he got run out wide on the opening lap he's trying to fight back now you see some gravel brought onto the road I think even before the race started that gravel was there it's not on the racing line thankfully because cars can circumnavigate that on the uh, very extreme outside line all the way down to turn one but right now where is their battle going to come from to shuffle the order because the gaps are creeping up all the way through the order Martins has done the fastest lap of the race two laps in a row now as he comes into the braking zone through turn one now, Colombo to Vidalis is one second. Vidalis to Alatalo is seven tenths. Alatalo to Sosi is six tenths of a second. So further down the order, it is happening. Number 17 there, Harry and Davy with Alex Quinn behind him. So Alex, who comes here, fifth in the championship, although equal on points with William Alatalo ahead of him. And indeed, Victor Martins behind him in the points, the way the classification is worked out on, on your results. Alex Quinn just hasn't really been able to match the pace here that he had in Italy so can he wriggle his way up past David as the race wears on right now Henry and David keeping him at bay downhill they plunge once again this lap four but Alex Quinn the British driver in the non-Arden colours the black and white livery Alex single-seater racer GT racer as well in GT4 turns through turn eight makes the climb up the hill he's being chased by Rashid Dugueras who's up from the back of the grid and behind Dugueras you've got Lashlo Toff who's also worked his way now up past Vicky Piria so a place change there as well so number 91 Paul Aaron accelerates up towards the Ad Van Bogen the race leader in the meantime, though, continues to be Victor Martins. At the start of this lap, it was a second and a half. Now, Colombo has just done the absolute best in the middle sector. Does that suggest he's able to come back at the race leader? Still there's time on the clock, but Martins has got very good pace indeed as he comes now then up to the exit of turn 17. Over the timing line goes Victor Martins. Then the race leader goes by. Four laps are done, and a second and a half margin is now 1.6. So if anything, despite the efforts of Colombo, the margin increases just ever so slightly.
battle on for fourth place there. Alitalo being caught a little under breaking maybe by Gregoire Sosi as they turn out of turn one. The run now up around the arena. So ART leads the way. Bytec second at the moment. And then JD Motorsport third and fourth. ART fifth. And it is RHGP running in sixth place. Field turns through. So Martin's the race leader from Colombo. And there you can see what's going on further down the order as the field drops down to turn eight. Up the hill goes Alitalo, still chasing on in that rookie contest. Victor Martin's race leader, 1.6 seconds clear of everybody else right now, looking strong up front. Alitalo inching up onto the back of Vidalis here then. Towards the end of the lap, they come. So Gregoire Sosi hanging on to fifth ahead of Collet, but Martin's now 1.8 seconds clear in the lead of the race. So Martin's the race leader, and here Alatalo under attack because now Gregoire Sosi is right on his tail. A little bit deep out of turn three goes Alitalo. He's able to defend and now accelerates out of the corner down towards turns five and six. But all of a sudden, he's found himself in a battle, hasn't he? Because Gregoire Sosi has got a bit frustrated now being sat there behind him and he's trying to force an error out of the car ahead. So downhill they turn once again. Bit of a lock up there, there by Gregoire Sosito. That compromises the run completely down at the bottom of the hill. So there you've got 32. That is David Vidalis. He's falling a long way back from Lorenzo Colombo, who's having another push on this lap. In second place, Colombo closing on Martins. That gap down by a tenth in the first sector, but. Again, it's all so elasticated, this. You do it in one sector, but then close a little bit, get in the dirty air if you're that close, and so the gap widens as you go slower. In the middle sector, Martin's fractionally slower again than Colombo, but only by 100, so it's not going to affect matters hugely as he powers out of the chicane. But there for third and fourth, Vidal is to Alitalo, the two teammates, three tenths of a second it was. Kyle Collins still stuck in that traffic as well, look. over the timing line. Martin's up front. The gap still hovering around the 1.8 second mark. Lorenzo Colombo having his best showing of the year in second place. Vidalis runs third. Now there is Kyle Collett, who's six tenths back from Gregoire Sosi, but right now not looking as though he's going to be able to catch him, is he? That margin between the two of them remains just enough, just tantalisingly too much for Kyle Collett. He's not been able to hack into it and therefore can't even think about trying to apply the pressure to force the error to make the move. Celebrating 50 years of Formula Renault this year. It began as a French based championship. It wasn't long before it spread its wings across Europe and has for many, many seasons been the junior one make single seater category. But it's had an amazing pedigree of drivers that have gone through it. Some on to Formula One stardom, others to alternative categories of the sport, others to different roles. But as the cars come through turn eight right now, Victor Martins, 1.8 seconds to the good. It's not been a, a brilliant start to the season for Victor, sixth in the championship, but it's all piecing together quite nicely at the moment for him. So Martins on lap seven. We've got 17 minutes plus a lap still to run. 
there is David Villales, one of the other points all for him. In terms of the championship, the man that is the leader, Kaya Collett, is sixth in the race. Collar Pinto is seventh in the race, and Vidal is third, third in the race. So it's going to be pretty good in terms of a point haul for the end of this race for him. Cars now stream their way up towards the chicane once again. But Victor Martin's looking oh so strong up front, and Vidal is here shaking off the challenge yet again of William Alatalo. So that margin that had come down a little bit extends once more here. Through they turn, and 93, which is Gregoire Sosi in fifth place. Frustrated that he can't really go after Alatalo and Kyle Collett not being able to make enough progress up onto his tail. Over the line they come once more then. Over the line, past the pits, and down towards turn one. There you see is Franco Collar Pinto. Behind him is Patache. Behind him is Timon van der Helm. And the top ten being rounded out by Amory Cordiel. Cordiel there, right on the back of van der Helm as they round turn one. Now, is he going to be able to have a go, I wonder, and do anything for position? Not far off the halfway point of this first of the two Formula Renault Euro Cup races of the weekend. So, Victor Martins well clear in the race lead. We're on lap 8. 16 is the prediction, barring any safety car interruptions. So, the field plunges downhill once more. So Victor Martins looking good in terms here of a potential race win so far this season. Bearing in mind it's his second year in these cars, a tenth, then a second, and two fourths out of Imola. He's been okay, he's got him some points, but not quite what he anticipated. So this could be the weekend where it all starts to turn around for Victor Martins. He leads the way by still 1.8 seconds, the margin not particularly growing, nor is it coming down any. So it's plateaued a little bit here. So there you've got 32, that is David Vidalis, he's running third, still keeping teammate Alatalo at bay, and he had actually stretched that gap on the last lap up to 1.2 seconds, whereas Collett now is in his best position yet to get a move made against Gregoire Sosi as they come into the turn 17 right-hander now, shoot off the corner, up towards the line, is this going to be the possibility to get a toe and then get the run on the inside line down at turn one, Collett in the wheel tracks, but no, he's still not close enough, and to do it, you'd have to come from a long way back, you'd be more at risk, and so he just sits there, and that's the frustration, he hasn't got that last tenth to be able to find a way by. It also means that as he gets stuck, and as has to defend, so Gregoire Sosi drops away from William Alatalo. Perversely, that might release Alatalo now to have a go at the traffic ahead. Can he therefore close on David Vidalis because he's not having to defend anymore from what's going on behind him? Down they come into turn five. Another battle there, Tyman van der Helm versus Amory Cordiel. Cordiel towards the right-hander of turn eight, but again, you see, he's in the same situation. He's just not close enough to be able to have a go. As soon as you close up, you get in the dirty air, it affects your aero, and so that negative effect happens to your car. Thirteen minutes are on the clock. Kaya Collett and... Hadri and David, 6th and 13th, the two Renault Sport Academy drivers, as the cars work now lap 9 of the race. The clock ticking on down all the time, of course, here. But for Victor Martins, it's clear now by two seconds up front. Kyle Collins still frustrated. He is close to the back of Sosie, but is he going to get close enough to be able to have a proper go, I wonder? through they turn over the timing line 12 minutes and counting all the while here for Victor Martins but he has not put a wheel wrong thus far hasn't Victor and he's looking strong up front he's done the fastest lap of the race as well so Martins clear Colombo, Vidalis, Alitalo, Sosi and Collett there further back Hedrian David under attack from Alex Quinn 
can the British driver force the issue here? He can't because David runs wide, clips over the curb. That might just unsettle him enough to give Quinn a chance to challenge here. Quinn not able to take advantage though. The gap is down, but you see even a little error doesn't always necessarily allow the guy behind to be able to find a way past. Alex Quinn not able to take full advantage of that. What it has proved though, is that you can get Harry and David a bit rattled and you'll have another go at him, I'm sure, over the course of the next lap if you can stay nice and tight in behind him. So 17, Henry and David, 13th he runs. Dropping away, therefore, from Ugo de Wilder, who is the man ahead of him in the race, Alex Quinn behind. Are they going to get caught by Rashid de Gueras? That gap is two and a half seconds. So I don't think they are, necessarily. 11 minutes and a lap remain here at the Nürburgring. As way up the curve goes Henry and David. He's certainly pushing to try and get away, isn't he, from Alex Quinn. The Arden car chases after the Renault Sport Academy. Delivering MP Motorsport entry of Henry and David. More dust kicked up. Was that the Van der Helm and Cordiel fight doing that? That's all on the exit of the Bilstein curve. To the inside line goes Amory Cordiel. Are we going to have a change? We are. He does it. He goes through. And as long as he doesn't go in too deeply and make it a bit of a scrappy exit, he will secure the place. Chops across the front there of Time and Van der Helm. But he keeps that place. So Amory Cordiel up into ninth, but Tymon van der Helm will try to fight back as they come over the line. The inside line covered off there by 71. Amory Cordiel to the outside line now goes van der Helm. Is he going to be able to make a move under braking? The answer is going to be no. He's going to try, but he's on the wrong line and he'll have to give way, but he wants the undercut. Is he going to get alongside? If he does, it's the outside at turn two and he can't do that. Cordiel's very good at chopping across the front of him, but again, elbows out. I'm coming through, I'm coming across. You are not going to have that place back. So Cordiel up into ninth. And he's just about, I think, got the best of Van der Helm now with Paul Aaron next up in 11th place, suddenly much, much closer. Through they turn once again, drop down to turn six there. So Amory Cordiel at one spot. And now it'll be interesting to see whether he can pull away. And if he can, can he do anything at all about Petra Patacek up the road, who is two seconds clear. So Patacek running in eighth place. There is Kodil. And now that he's on the move, let's see what progress can be made. Here's the move that he made in replay. So gets a run on the back of Van der Helm to the inside. Breaks as late as he dares. But the danger is that you then run out over the curb or you get the exit wrong. So straight away, he moves back across, chops across the front of Van der Helm, but he's got the job done. There's another good lap coming up from the race leader because Victor Martins here is building that margin. It was two and a half seconds last time, but he's done an absolute best in sector one. He's pulled away by another tenth in sector two. So the lead continues to be all about Victor Martins here. Eight and three quarter minutes of the timed element of the race still to go. Another challenge, 91 fights back, does he, Paul Aaron? And there's contact between him and Van der Helm. Van der Helm is the one that sort of gets fired off wide into the chicane. Up the inside comes Aaron, Van der Helm doesn't give him a lot of room, but Paul Aaron will go through on the inside line. He's going to go wide, possibly, so Van der Helm tries to fight back on the inside. Up the curb goes Aaron on exit. Van der Helm on the inside, but again, that car seems to lack straight line speed. It was the same against uh, Cordiel a lap ago, and Paul Aaron might have been a messy start to the move, but he's made it stick. Covers off the inside line down towards turn one. Also joining that mix is Ugo de Wilder now. So as they come through, de Wilder on the attack. Van der Helm trying to attack and defend all at the same time. Turns his way up through turn three, does Van der Helm. But he's going to have to be more defensive, I think, than attack because de Wilder has got the momentum and he's right there crawling all over the back of the FA Racing entry. The Fernando Alonso team colours carried by Tymon van der Helm, who don't forget is still going to be investigated post race for something that happened on the way to the grid. There's been some coming together between Hadri and David and Alex Quinn that's been noted by race control, we are told. So that's going to be uh, looked at potentially. So Aaron is in the ascendancy, he's into the top 10 now. So he's into the points, or point singular in his case. Now here's where it all started. So he gets a good run up through the Ad Van Bogen. And that's a really good, bold effort. Trouble was, he was never alongside. So there was contact, which unsettled Van der Helm. But Aaron 
trying to make the most of it. And Van der Helm, you can tell, wasn't impressed because he virtually put him in the pit lane there. And then he, at the end, thought, oh, I better give you some room. So Aaron goes through. Van der Helm then tried to get the undercut, but he hasn't got the pace in a straight line, seemingly, against other cars. So it was a futile effort. So right now, it is 32 David Vidal, as you're looking at, with Alitalo catching him and Gregoire Sosi now having a real push in these last seven minutes he's brought the gap down against Alitalo the leader has gone by so 12 laps are in the book now for Victor Martins the margin that he's got is 2.8 seconds over Colombo third is Vidales fourth is Alitalo fifth is Sosi sixth is Collet seventh is Colapinto Patacek eighth is Cordiel ninth and it's Aaron in tenth place now so Victor Martins 2.8 seconds to the good Sector by sector, just another tenth gained here, a couple of tenths there. It's all adding up nicely. And in a sense, what you're seeing is what we expected all year from Martins, given his experience. Over the line, Alex Quinn being caught now by Hadrian David, but they've switched places once, so David wants to go back ahead. Quinn is ahead of him now in 13th, but all of this happening outside the points. Big frustration for them. Out of turn three goes Quinn. Rashid Dejera still chasing along behind, but not really being able to get close enough as the cars head towards turn five. Victor Martins looking unstoppable, barring a mistake right now. Did have a race, was it here last year, where he had to pit at the end of a formation lap, didn't even start the race, but it's, uh, 12 months on. The result looking a lot more promising for Victor Martins. Downhill he heads, 2.8 seconds clear of Lorenzo Colombo. David Vidal is in third place ahead of Alatalo fourth, Sosi fifth and Collet in sixth place. And Victor Martins with this big, big gap now, 2.8 seconds, well clear of everybody else. Kai Collet is the man running in sixth place, number one, the championship leader, but he's effectively giving away points here to the opposition. Victor Martins, runner-up in the championship last year, so came back this year with high hopes, really, of uh, the title, but it has not really turned out to be his season just yet but maybe the attack starts here six times a race winner last year but this will be his first victory potentially of this season I say potentially because he's not done yet he's 2.8 seconds still ahead of Lorenzo Colombo another of the second year drivers so again Colombo kind of showing what you would have expected of him anyway he was fourth in the championship last year did take three wins but win less thus far third is Vidal is the best of the first year drivers the best of the true rookies as he was at Imola, where he won out right in both races. Alitalo is next up, another of the rookie drivers, and Gregoire Sosi fifth ahead of Kyle Collett, who after that pop start has been disappointing, really, in the sense that he's not been able to make up the lost ground. So the race leaders on lap 14, you can see the clock ticking on down, four minutes on the clock. An incident involving Quinn and David, no action taken. Whether anything comes of um, the way Paul Aaron classic past Van der Helm, we'll wait and see. But for the moment, he is clear in 10th place, Paul Aaron. There, Alitalo keeping Sosi at bay as they round the turn eight right-hander, head up the hill once more. But with the gap stretching between Vidalis and Alitalo, William now the Finn. There he is in the blue car for JD Motorsport, has to concentrate his efforts really on keeping at bay the man behind, namely Gregoire Sosi. Up the curb, coming out of the Bilstein curve, goes first of all Vidalis, then Alitalo, Sosi behind him. So three minutes on the clock, a flying lap is just under two. So they're going to have three more laps by the look of it. Out of the chicane comes Alitalo, the race leader Victor Martins breaks the beam now then. So through he goes, Victor Martins across the timing line. That last lap was a 155.6, as you see the man in second place, Lorenzo Colombo, head down to turn one into the braking zone. But there's nothing that Colombo can do about Martins. Equally, he's so far ahead now, seven seconds clear of Vidal, is that all he's got to do is bring it home for the points. The Mont Blanc delivery car runs second. 
but Vidal is third, Alatalo fourth. They're just too far back to challenge. It's a real no man's land race, this for Colombo. I think he's self isolating, really, because there's nobody around him. He comes into turn five, but Victor Martin's away and gone 2.6 seconds to the good up front now. That does mean he's come down slightly, courtesy of an absolute best middle sector on the last lap by Colombo. Vidalis, where's this going to put him in the championship? Where will it put him relative to Caio Collett? Bearing in mind that Vidalis missed the first two races, but the rookie class leader here, third overall, doing another very good job indeed. You could argue that JD Motorsport hasn't got the best setup here compared to the one it had at Imola, but even so, Vidalis is uh, the best of the rest behind the top two, who are, don't forget, second year drivers. This car introduced new, new last year, and uh, David Vidalis makes the run here up into the Schumacher S, rides the kerb, it's become part of the racing line now as Avatalo and Sosa prove behind him. So down the hill comes the third, fourth, fifth duel, but Vidal is, still looks like he's got that all under control, does he not? The race leader, Victor Martins, is up at turn 17. So as he comes now through that right-hander, depending on whose track map you want to look at, uh, the chicane is given three different numbers. So uh, although there are 16 curves, 17 is the number given to that last corner, which is the one in the background. So as he coming out of the uh, corner now, but the lead gap up again, 2.9 seconds now. Martins to Colombo. Vidal is good for the podium in that third place. To turn one then we'll go Victor Martins 2.9 seconds clear so the clock should hit zero on this lap and then there'll be that regulation lap tagged on at the end Hadrian David goes down into turn one whoops bit of a slide from Victor Martins there so he is still pressing on as you can see he's putting the power down nice and early and the back almost stepping out of line despite the handcoop rubber being nice and sticky now nice and hot after the best part of half an hour of use comes down towards turn eight sets the car up into that right hander he turns still being chased by Colombo in that second place but the gap is just not coming down is it and Martins has done such a good job of building it and consolidating it looks like it's pretty much job done now so over the brow they come into the left at the uh, Ravenol curve go right at the Bilstein curve and then plunge downhill once again. But for Victor Martins, this has been an overdue dominance. So lots expected of him. Plus, he's got a point to prove having fallen off that Renault Sport Academy. Last year, he carried the Renault colors. This year, he doesn't have that luxury of the uh, Renault backing, the Renault funding, so it's been a, a tough winter, never mind lockdown. And he comes across the timing line now to start the last lap of the race with this margin, which was 2.9 seconds a lap ago, now being 3.3. Wow, that is some gain in the space of a lap. So Victor Martins down at turn one. He, on the last lap, did the fastest lap of the race, yet quicker, a 155.330. So Victor Martins laying down a marker here saying do not forget about me might not have been a great start to the season but i am back and this will help him in the championship as well 25 points especially with kyo collett the championship leader not scoring brilliantly in sixth place he'll score and it could be that when we get to the end of the season they'll be very important points but they're not necessarily the uh, requisite number that he wants so there is in third place Vidalis coming out of turn four towards us with Alitalo chasing after him in the background is Kyle Collett with the green mirrors on the yellow and black Renault Sport coloured car that's operated by the RH GP team. His teammate Petra Patacek down in eighth place as you look there at Gregoire Sosi coming downhill. So there is 92, Victor Martins. Checker flag is at the ready. Victor Martins is a dominant driver within 
Formula Renault Euro Cup here at the Nürburgring. He makes the climb up the hill, sets the car up for the chicane. In a week's time, they'll be at Manny Corps, but there's a race to go tomorrow here. As now, into the right-hander he comes. 92 then, Victor Martins through turn 17, up towards the chequered flag. It's a first win of 2020 for Victor Martins in Formula Renault Euro Cup. It's been a long time coming, but he has done it and done it in style. Victor Martins wins from Lorenzo Colombo in second place. The gap, 3.3 seconds. David Vidales is set for third place, ahead of William Alatalo. Then, Gregoire Sosi, and in the background, Kyle Collett takes sixth. They head over the line. Seventh should go the way of Franco Colapinto. Now, the man, therefore, that was second in the championship coming into that race. Another one, not to score brilliantly. Patacek, eighth. Cordiel, ninth. And Aaron rounds out the scorers in tenth place. So a good job done, certainly a good job done by Victor Martins, winning and winning in style. So he will make his way on the slowing down lap straight off to Park Fairmate. Instead of doing a full lap, they are uh, taken off the circuit. So the winning driver, Victor Marsans, Lorenzo Colombo for second. So Victor Martins, the race winner from Lorenzo Colombo in second place and David Vidales in third. Fourth, Gregoire Sussi, William Alatalo fifth, ahead of Caio Collett with Franco Colapinto seventh, ahead of Petra Patacek, Amory Cordiel and Paul Aaron rounding out the top ten. Simon van der Helm, 11th, under investigation for something that happened pre-race. More on that when we have the news. And at the foot of the order, Vicky Piria brings home the field in her first outing in Formula Renault Euro Cup. So, a great drive by Victor Martins, absolutely no stopping him in that race. Quick look at the highlights of it, and a lot of the story was done off the grid, wasn't it? With that bad start by Kyle Collett, a good start by Victor Martins that put him in the lead of the race. The cars accelerated down towards turn one. There was a bit of a lockout from Vidales in third place. Collett, though, got shuffled back in the pack and was never really able to recover from that. So, uh, as the cars swung their way up around the arena for the first time, you had there Gregoire Sosi on the outside of William Alatalo, but he couldn't make the move stick. Timon van der Helm was busy trying to keep at bay the uh, car of Amory Cordiel. And Harry and David had a good battle with Alex Quinn, those two running together for most of the race. In the end, Quinn got by, but there was very little shuffling up front because the order quite quickly became settled with the pace of Victor Martins keeping him ahead. And although here there was an attack by Gregoire Sosi against William Alatalo, that in turn really came to nothing. Adrian David and Alex Quinn squabbled. Quinn having a look to try to go one side and then the other down into the arena. But David was able to fend him off, even with a tiny little slide. Quinn not able to take advantage there, but he was late race, as we also had a change on the inside. Amory Cordiel getting ahead of time and van der Helm, and then van der Helm got done over by Paul Aaron as well. A couple of laps later, same place, coming through the chicane. Aaron squeezed towards pit in, but eventually van der Helm gave him room, looking to try to get the switch back on the inside. The intent was there, but the speed of the car wasn't, and so he couldn't do anything about him and had to slot back in behind. Number 32 on target for third, David Vidal is to win the rookie contest as 92 Victor Martins won the race, his first victory of the season, and that will be a big boost in the championship. Second across the line was Lorenzo Colombo, and the top three rounded out by David Vidalis. But a great drive. Victor Martins takes a first win. He's with Jenna Scott. Victor, you actually made that look easy. Your first win of 2020 and a very, very dominant drive. Yeah, that's amazing. I thanks the team because the car was just uh, mega. And uh, I just had to, to stay focused on what I was doing. Just uh, keep like keep going uh, like I was doing, uh, lap by lap. And, uh, and yeah, that's the first win for, for the team and myself uh, this year, so that's amazing. Going into race two tomorrow with a lot of confidence then? Yeah, exactly. We, we did a pretty good job in qualifying. Uh, we had two poles by quite a margin, so that's good for tomorrow. Let's make a good start and then uh, the same race. Thank you very much and well done. Thank you. So wins this year in Formula Renault Euro Cup to Franco Colapinto, Kyle Collett, David Vidales, and now Victor Martins, four different winners 
uh, for uh, the five rounds that we've had thus far. And the uh, two podiums we have overall and rookie will be getting underway very shortly once all the requisite drivers have been rounded up. Of course, with so many different uh, teams here across different championships, the Renault paddock is quite a long way out in the sticks. There's a lot of land at the Nürburgring, but uh, right down at the foot of the paddock they are, so it takes a little while to get everybody there. Victor Martin's the race winner, just to confirm that race result, from Lorenzo Colombo and David Vidales. Gregoire Sussi uh, taking fourth ahead of William Alitalo on that result. Now, why is that? Why has Alitalo been given a penalty? Caio Collet sixth, Franco Colapinto seventh from Patacek Cordiel and Paul Aaron in 10th place. So David Vidal is called forward for third position. The drivers get their own trophies to stand on the step. And it's a big, big backdrop for them. You see the podium steps metres apart. Second place then, it is then making his way forward, Lorenzo Colombo. But the race winner is Victor Martins, race winner with great style. And he makes his way to the top step of the podium, fist bumps all round. And Victor Martins is very happy indeed, understandably as well, with that result. Now we have the ART GP representative to come for the winning team. And uh, a very happy squad with uh, a race win, a pole, and a fastest lap for Victor Martins. So there the drivers make their way from the podium and uh, RHGP celebrating the race win. In the background you've got GT cars out on track, ready for their race coming up imminently. But Victor Martin celebrates honours and let's see whether he can do two from two tomorrow because they will race tomorrow mid-morning before six hours of GT racing takes to the Nürburgring. Martins, multiple race winner last year, but this overdue first win will be very sweet indeed this season. Our race, oh, sorry, ART Grand Prix, the uh, winning team, and so they're on the top step, position one for Victor Martins. Well, that sort of makes up for that disappointment, as I said, of 12 months ago here when he had to miss, was it the second race with the car? having a mechanical malady at the end of the green flag lap. <laughs> 